Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Patricia and I'm currently a senior UX designer working at Williams Sonoma Incorporated. On my channel, I talk about my design journey, any tips and takeaways that I've learned from being a UX designer. And you can follow me on Instagram or follow me on this channel for support. So today I'll be talking about the differences between a contract role and a full-time role in the UX design industry and how it works. Probably wondering, what is a contract role? Well, a contract role is usually a design role that is created for a short-term basis based on project needs that the company wants to outsource and, and get more designers to help out on that project. So contracts can come through third-party recruiting agencies and they're basically the middleman for the hiring companies and they help source for potential candidates that may be a good fit for the contract roles that they are hoping to fill out to help them out on projects. And some examples of these third-party recruiting agencies can be K-Force, Creative Circle, Tech Systems, or Motion Recruitment. And of course, these are just to name a few, but there are many, many more if you look on LinkedIn or any job posting platform. And there's also recruiting agencies that focus specifically on design related jobs. So take a look and do your research to see which one works out for you. Typically for contract roles, they can vary in terms of how long the contract can last. So it can be from three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and I even heard of 24 months, which is, which is quite a long time. So sometimes a contract can just simply mean it's a contract. When it ends, basically it's when the project is finished. And there's another term that's pretty popular, which is contract to hire. And what contract to hire means is that there is a potential that when your contract ends, let's say, for example, it's a three month contract, there's a chance that the company, if they like to have you full time, they convert you to a direct hire and you become a full time employee from that. I haven't been as fortunate in experiencing a transition from being a contractor to a full-time hire. So if any of you have had succeeded in that, I'd love to know in the comments below and also just how it went and also how often it happens because I haven't had any luck and I'm just so curious about this because this is the term I keep hearing so many times, but for me so far like no success in that transition so in a previous video of mine i talked about how i left my full-time job to pursue a contract role so go check that out if you want to see how i felt about it and also what i learned from that contract role i think it's great as a way to transition into ux or product design if you're having no luck in finding a full-time job so for a contract role there's definitely pros and cons so i'll start with the pros first the pros is it's a shorter term commitment compared to a full-time job. And what that means is you actually get to move through different industries. Perhaps you want to experience like, for example, uh, e-commerce or perhaps gaming or a financial industry. And you get to move within those industry and also get a breadth of different projects you can work on. That's great for your portfolio. Another great thing about being a contractor is that you get to have a real job experience, meaning that you get real projects that you can work on. And as I mentioned before, you can definitely put these on your portfolios and there's a chance that they could be uh, features that you've designed that can launch live. And you can definitely use that as part of your portfolio piece if it's not under NDA. So with every set of pros, there are definitely cons. And one of the cons of being a contractor is that you have to continue the job hunt after a contract ends. So that means that after a contract ends and let's say the employer decides to not renew your contract, you have to go back in the job market, do the same thing, rinse and repeat, um, continue doing the interview process with different companies. If you wanna continue the contract role route or you want to seek a full-time employment somewhere. Another con about being a contractor is that you do not get the same benefits as a full-time employee. So some examples of that is 401k matching or external budgets for external learnings, uh, maternity, paternity leave. These are, these are benefits that you will not get as a contractor unless your agency provides the means to do so. And as a follow-up to that, your benefits will end when your contract ends. 
Yeah, so basically any benefits you get through your recruiting agency, like your 401k or your medical insurance, dental, vision insurance, that will end as soon as the contract ends. And also don't forget in some cases, if there is a layoff happening, contractors are the first to go and Remember that you are not a full-time employee, so you will not be getting any severance of any sort. So keep that in mind if you're considering a contract role. Make sure you look through all the benefits and think about next steps if your contract role is coming to an end or you're looking for another role if you feel like the contract isn't a great fit for you. Here are some things that you should know when you are working with a third-party recruitment company. So your benefits come through them and not directly from the hiring company themselves. So these recruitment agencies would have their own set of benefits that they offer. Some of them offer paid time off, some of them offer holiday pay, a 401k, medical coverage, a dental and vision coverage, and many more. So make sure when you're talking to one of these agencies, make sure you get clarity on what their benefits are. And make sure you read thoroughly through the contracts of how contract termination works, as well as reading any terms of um, any NDAs before you sign the contract. So one important factor that's really important to consider is your hourly rate. So this can be affected again by whatever your agency offers, like paid time off or paid holidays. This will affect how your hourly rate is compensated. So make sure you do your research on how much you need to have in order to live your lifestyle, pay your expenses, um, have your medical coverage, and all the really important things um, before you name your hourly rate to the recruiter. And sometimes read the job descriptions. They will provide a range of what the hiring company is willing to pay. So make sure you pay attention to that and see if that fits within um, how your lifestyle is. And again, like if it can pay off your expenses because higher hourly rates usually mean that you have more expenses to cover. So don't forget that. You get to have the opportunity to get overtime if the company allows you to do so. I don't think full-time employees get that, um, but let me know. So for me, the agency that I've partnered up with, the benefits that I receive is 401k, I do have medical coverage, dental and vision, and also sick leave. But um, the trade-off is that I don't get any pay during holidays, and I also don't get any pay when I have TO or time off. In terms of the contract interview process, I have found that it's a lot shorter than a normal full-time interview process. So usually on average, I would say there's a one to two rounds of interviews. And this is completely dependent on how the hiring company wants to manage the interviews. I have gone through interviews where I just talked to the hiring manager and had a couple one-on-ones with potential teammates or uh, lead UX designers that I will be working with. So that's one example. And another example is I went through the hiring manager and I did a take home assignment and I presented that as part of my portfolio walkthrough to the group or the team of designers that I would be working with. So it really depends on how the hiring company wants to structure the interview. So again, like make sure you ask your recruiter how the interview process is gonna be like and check in with them often. So I'll be going over the set of pros and cons for full-time roles. And some of the pros for full-time roles is you don't always have to continue job hunting every quarter, which is kind of nice if you're not into interviewing or you just want to have a job stability. That's kind of the nice perk of having a full-time role. Another perk of having a full-time role is you do get to take advantage of the full company benefits as a full-time employee. So some of these benefits may be having external learning budget, maybe a work from home budget to set up your remote work desk if you work remotely. Um, there's also team building events you can participate in. There could be maybe company discounts and maternity paternity leave and many more perks. This is again, dependent on what the company offers especially as part of their benefits package or what they put out in their job description. So make sure you read about that. Another pro of having a full-time job 
is the consistency. So what I mean by that is you get to meet with the same teammates, you get to be familiar with people that you work with outside of your team. So there's a more consistent basis and there's more of a relationship building that comes out of it too. And you're not switching different companies and having to familiarize yourself again with different processes or, um, or getting to know like different teammates every quarter. So that's kind of a nice thing about full-time roles. Cons about looking for full-time roles is that it can be extremely competitive because of our current economic situation and with all the layoffs that are happening, it can get pretty, pretty competitive because full-time roles are very sought after. And there's just, again, like that job security, the benefits that come with it. So just be aware of that, but don't let that intimidate you. You should still apply if you are looking for a full-time role. Another con about full-time roles is you don't get to know the company culture until you stay there a lot longer and maybe you don't feel like it's a good fit for you in terms of culture. And another con is maybe the company that you wanted to work for, the projects weren't as interesting as you thought it would be, or the projects were not what you thought it would be when you were talking to the team during the interview. So these are some cons of a, of a full-time role, but take it with a grain of salt. Every person has a different perspective on pros and cons for a full-time role. All right, so for a full-time interview process, it can vary. Again, like it depends on the company. Sometimes you can be reached out by a recruiter that's directly from the company's recruiting team, or it can also be from a third-party recruiter. So usually you would have a recruiter phone call. They'll ask you about um, your background, as well as your interest in the company. They'll tell you about what, what the hiring manager is looking for. And usually a popular setup of these interviews is talking to the hiring manager first for perhaps 30 to 45 minutes. The next round can consist of portfolio walkthroughs, or it can be a whiteboard challenge, or it can even be a take home challenge. And the third round can also consist of one-on-one -on -one, uh, interviews with different teammates that you may work with, again, with product managers, engineers, um, or someone from creative or a copywriter. So it can vary. And some companies just have a one-day interview where they have portfolio walkthrough and one-on-ones on the same day. So work with your recruiter to understand what the setup is gonna be like and try to get as much details as you can from the recruiter on how each round of interview is gonna work. So here are three key tips I wanna leave you with if you are considering a contract role. Make sure that you have a one-on-one -on -one with your manager or whoever is in charge of your hiring process a month before your contract ends. This is incredibly important because it helps manage your expectation in, if, in, in the case of if your contract is not gonna be renewed or if it's gonna be renewed and this will help you figure out if you are going to continue in that contract role or you are going to have to look for another job elsewhere and i would work with your recruiter from the third party agency to work on if there is going to be any other opportunities that they have posted or they can find some other roles for you so make sure you keep that in mind and the second takeaway is really important Remember that a high hourly rate means that you have more expenses that you need to cover. So I will reiterate this again. Make sure you understand what benefits are being offered from these recruiting agencies and see if it fits into your lifestyle and it's what you're looking for. And be clear on what you need to cover because the hourly rate is affected by Again, like your living expensive, if you need to cover any medical insurance, do you need to pay out of pocket? So these are a lot of things that you need to ask yourself um, before accepting a contract role. Don't forget about retirement funds. So that's pretty important too. Like, are you going to contribute to a retirement fund? 
and make sure you have check-ins with your recruiter or at least communicate with your recruiters on any updates in the interview process as well as any feedback that the employers might give if you got rejected from the role. So it's really important to communicate with your recruiters because they are a resource, they are there to support you and if you have any concerns, you should speak up and talk to them about any concerns you may have during your role as a contractor or any possible interviews that you may have in the future. I think contract roles are a great way to get your foot in the door for different industries, especially if you are a junior designer that's trying to get into UX, any career transitioners and anyone that wants to gain more experience in different areas of UX or product design. And remember to think about what you want out of the role, whether it's contract or full-time. Is this role going to help me with my design career? Is it going to help me with my career goals? Is this going to help me grow my skill set as a designer? And does it fit into helping me with my being able to have a job where I'm happy in. So these are some factors to think about. I highly suggest writing down a pros and cons list if you are considering between a contract and full-time role. Obviously a full-time role is more is more attractive than a contract role because you get to be there more long term but there's no harm in taking a contract role unless it's a really uh, red flag type of situation and you feel like, I don't think this may be the role for me. And that's totally fine. I think it just depends on what you want out of the role and also what you want for your career. Um, the decision is up to you, but I hope that this video helps you with understanding the differences between the contract and full-time role. As always, thank you for watching my videos and I hope you enjoyed this content. If you do, please feel free to subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you guys next time.